All right, I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee and then we're definitely gonna start. So hang in there, I'll be right back and we'll start the stream in just a little over a minute. All right, mes amis, uh, bon matin, goeiemorgen, good morning. Um, is it still morning? It is. 10 minutes to 11 here in the beautiful city of Amersfoort. Um, welcome uh, to all of you watching. Um, I noticed about 20 to 30 people watch this on Facebook, so I'm really happy with, with that. I never even expected anyone to, to care, so, uh, but this is... This is gonna be uh, this is a whole lot of fun for me, uh, so and I'm really happy to that I made the decision to do this. Um, one of the fun things is combining my faith with something others might be interested in, whether it's Star Wars or whether it is what do you call uh, you know other other stuff, other computer games, and we're definitely gonna be playing other games after this one. This is just my uh, summer project that I agreed upon with my friend Lena. But today is a very uh, uh, special day. I, I like to start or end with a little tidbit of religious stuff. And today uh, I was reading the gospel and it was again from St. John's gospel. Now as you may know, um, St. John is used in the church for special occasions most of the time. And um, so I looked it up. Why? Uh, and if you if you're in the United States, if you're in Canada, if you're in other places than Europe, the chances are if you look at the Daily Gospel, it's Matthew. Uh, because I looked it up in English, because I was obviously reading it in Dutch, and I looked it up in English, and it wasn't the same gospel. It's like what is going on? And then I figured out uh, that today is the feast of Saint Bridget of Sweden, uh, and she. Uh, St. John Paul II, Pope John Paul II, elevated her, and I think um, Edith Stein and um, Catherine of Siena uh, to uh, the title of co-patron of, of, of Europe. I mean, now we have so many patrons that I can't even, I can't even reliably name them all. I, I know St. Benedict, but I, I bet there's more. Uh, oh, uh, Methodius and Cyrillus. Maybe that's all, that's six of them. Maybe it's an even three by three and three. Anywho, uh, <clears throat> uh, and I read the gospel. So I'm gonna read a little part for you because it's really cool. And then I'm gonna tell you some fast facts of, about St. Bridget, so you're up to speed. Uh, and then we'll tie it all together, obviously, if I'm any good at doing my job. So, uh, John 15 says, um, Jesus is talking. Uh, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Interesting. Yesterday, he, Jesus was recognized as the gardener. Is 
St. John trying to tell us something is often the whole thing with the Bible is people come to me and say, I don't understand. I teach in alpha groups and they say, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. Sometimes I understand <laughs> and I can explain. And you know, I like to talk, so I like to explain. I am a teacher. I am what I am, you know, um, but uh, sometimes I don't know. And that's this case for me as well. When I'm reading the Bible, I why is this in there? It's always the lock and the key. Sometimes you get a whole bunch of keys, you don't know which locks they go in. Sometimes you see a whole bunch of locks you can't unlock. Sometimes you match the key to the lock. Hey, yesterday, watch yesterday's stream. It's the opening. Even, even though I forgot to turn on my microphone uh, 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 the first five minutes or so, you see St. Mary Magdalene identifying Jesus as the gardener. Anywho, now the Father is the gardener. Is there a connection between the Father and Jesus? Yes. All right. Good. Uh, let's go to the gospel. <clears throat> the Father, the gardener, cuts off every branch that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You're already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. That's always a, a term in St. John. Uh, I come into the world or go out and you stay in me. I stay in you and the Father is in me and I'm in the Father and we're one. And this whole mystery that he's trying to, to, to teach us and why we say we experience Christ uh, in us. And uh, that is actually true. So that's how I sometimes am allowed to feel. Uh, <laughs> and you feel really connected to the Lord. You feel the Lord is acting through you um, because you're doing stuff that otherwise you would probably not have done yourself. And that is the moments when life gets really interesting. Anywho, <laughs> welcome to a few years of seminary, by the way, guys. <laughs> Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I am you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Bum, bum. Call it a reading uh, for uh, with this and... Um, uh, it's already be, become uh, tangent central here, <clears throat> but um, uh, let's let's uh, turn to uh, Saint Bridget of uh, Sweden. Now, uh, Bridget uh, lived uh, uh, early 14th century. I think she uh, like 1303. Uh, I, you know, I read I read up on her this morning. The only thing I know her for, I know she had visions. Can't tell you the visions. I was never that interested in St. Bridget of Sweden for some reason. Um, but I got into her a little bit. And I know one other thing. Uh, I met uh, the sisters and even uh, later on uh, the fathers uh, of the order she founded, the Bridgetines. Yeah. And they are really recognizable. They're really funky. Uh, they have uh, over their veil, at least the, the ladies, I don't know what. I can't really remember what the men look like. A white cross that goes here with the red center, red dot in the center, and a white circlet. And where the cross hits the circlet, there's also four red uh, dots. And the number five is the in the church, in the Catholic Church. The number of the wounds of Christ, two for the feet, two for the hand, and the heart. Um, uh, and you see it in a lot of things, like if you have an archbishop, uh, and the Pope is an archbishop, uh, and I have to be more precise for you uh, Catholic geeks out, out there, not all archbishops have this. It's called the pallium. Um, they have a white uh, piece of cloth, very, a thin cloth that goes here and down. And it has, uh, and, and, and back, of course. Um, and it also has the five cruises on, uh, crosses on it uh, for the five wounds. 
Now, not all archbishops have this. Only archbishops uh, that are uh, metropolitan archbishops, which means they have other dioceses, other bishops under them. Now, archbishop can be a honorific title. Uh, some uh, di in the diplomatic corps, for instance, or at the uh, Vatican uh, offices, like the the the, uh, uh, the government of the Vatican, I, I guess you could call it, uh, have honorary uh, archbishops, and they obviously don't have their own actual diocese; they're just archbishop. And that is one of the extremely screwed up things, in my opinion, of my church, and. Luckily, I think that is changing a bit under this Pope, but we'll have a long way to go yet. Good, back to St. Bridget. Um, that's all I knew about her. Now, oh, I also knew she wasn't a nun to begin with. Usually, when you think of nun, you think of a very celibate person. This person, St. Bridget, was anything but celibate for a long, for, uh, I think she, she was like 70 when she died, and the first, uh, she was, uh, the first part of her life, she was married. She was the daughter of a fast fact number one uh, that I learned today. She was the daughter of a knight, so she had some, I wouldn't say royalty, but when you say Bridget of Sweden, it doesn't mean she's part of the royal family, but she was uh, the daughter of a knight. Um, uh, she married a lord, uh, so she became princess, so that is fast fact number two. Uh, Fast fact uh, number three, she bore uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the guy uh, like eight children, four girls, four boys. So amazing. So like I said, she wasn't uh, very celibate for the first part of her life. Now at some point in time, uh, her um, husband uh, passed uh, on, passed on, and um, uh, she, she has to start a new life um, we're talking early 30s here uh, I think um, and, or maybe early 40s early 40s sounds right 1940 1344 so yeah early 40s and her husband dies and she uh, is the lady of waiting uh, of uh, someone of the uh, you know the new queen of uh, Sweden um, and uh, when her husband dies, she enters the third order. Now, the third order is anything you and I can also join. A third order, uh, in this case, third order of the Franciscans, St. Saint, Saint Francis. Um, you can become a Franciscan, even if you're not celibate, even if you're married. You can become a Franciscan. Is it a real Franciscan? Well, yes and no. You're definitely part of the order, uh, but it's very loosey-goosey. I mean, if you don't want to do anything I there's no uh, uh, father that's gonna check up on you and say you're not doing your prayers and whatnot that doesn't happen but uh, if you want to make the most out of your Franciscan spirituality you could join them uh, and just stay in their life you might have to go on a retreat or be invited to retreats uh, um, uh, and you might uh, get their prayer book and you do the prayers with them if you wanted to and a lot of these orders um, have these third orders. Um, you could, uh, some orders call it the, uh, like you're an oblate. And you have to be really careful because there's orders when they say oblate, they mean actual monks. So it's very confusing. I stay with the oblates of Mary Immaculate. I thought it was just a bunch of third order guys living together. Turns out they're not all third order. Why third order, by the way? First order, the dudes. Second order, the dudettes. Third order, you and me, lay people. Um, fine. Um, so, I, are we on fast fact four, five? I don't know. Fast fact five or four, she was a handmaiden to the queen of Sweden. Fast fact five, she joined the uh, Franci the Franciscan order. And Francis, St. Francis was known for doing good among the poor. And, of course, for his connection to nature. Now, so... Uh, St. Bridget started doing lots of work for the poor. At one point in time, fast fact number six, we're talking 1350 here. Uh, that is a jubilee year. We have to forget the world is a big cesspool because unlike today, where we understand a little bit about the coronavirus and how to deal with it, they had no idea how to deal with the plague. 
So you have someone who had the plague, great. You tossed them outside the city, great. That's kind of what we're doing with the lockdown now, isn't it? It is. Um, also, really smart. Then those folks die. What do you do? Burn the bodies. Smart? No way. Because that sort of uh, apparently carried the disease back into the into town. That was actually a really poor move, as I understand it. I know a story, and feel free to correct me, but that's what I was taught. Um, so she does a, a lot of work there, and she starts to form her own order. And as she has had a very rich uh, and fruitful married life, um, what she does is she starts monasteries where the monks and the nuns share the same building, calling them double monasteries, forming a joint community. Ask the Bridgetines how that works, because one thing you know, men and women are attracted to one another, and things will happen, but who am I to judge? So that's what uh, her order was uh, formed around. Instead of separate cloisters, one cloister, double monastery, right? Um, uh, fast fact number seven, they were poor as heck, that is, they were not allowed to spend the money they got, uh, well, on anything but the base necessities and books. They could have as many books as they liked. The rest of the money had to go to the poor and the sick. Now, if you want to found a religious order, if you, in case you want to do that, uh, you have to have permission of the bishop to do that, and you'll become a order of the um, uh, Episcopal jur of Episcopal jurisdiction. Obviously, it's not a very, you can only be in that one diocese. If you want to move on to a national or a international order, you have to go to Rome. This is exactly what St. Bridget did. We're talking 1350s. Third, uh, no, was it 1350s? Sort of. And she goes to Rome. Turns out the Pope isn't in Rome. What? No. The Popes were living in Avignon in uh, France. For a long time, there's lots of anti-Popes in Avignon. This wasn't that time yet, because I think that was the 1400s. Correct me again if I'm wrong, but... The popes were living in Avignon. Now, Urban V, who was pope at the time, came back to Rome for a while, and that's where Bridget met him, and uh, uh, like 1370, whatever. Uh, and this is where the pope confirmed the rule of the order, and that's how the Bridgetines became an international order. St. Bridget had to work and remain in Rome waiting for the Pope for many years. Instead of that, she was completely out of her element. She was in a different country, different language, and so on. A different city, different customs. She managed to thrive. People in Rome adored her. She did so many great things for the poor. People were crazy about her. Imagine a state that doesn't look after the poor like we do today in our social, well, in our more socially ordered states where we take care of the sick, the poor, the dying, the, the orphans, the widows, and so on. That wasn't institutionalized. No, sir, it wasn't. Uh, so they loved her. Um, and um, so much so that they wanted her to stay, and St. Bridget stayed in Rome until the, uh, her death in uh, 1373. So, is that enough? Fast fact. And this just goes to prove what the Gospel said. The Gospel says, remain in me. Not remain where you are. Not a place. Not a profession. Uh, not anything you do. 
Remain in me, is what Jesus says. It doesn't matter if you're the handmaiden to the Queen of Sweden or if you're a nun without many connections and Rome on your own. If you remain in me, if you t stay true to that uh, charism that I put in you, um, you will uh, bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you remain in me, I remain in you. And that is exactly what happened. And that is why St. Bridget is very cool. Uh, um, and a very worldly saint, in a way. Because she was really, she was married. She had children. Uh, she had court intrigue. Uh, she had education. But she also had poor, suffering, sickness. Was a part, uh, she traveled the, the Europe uh, uh, in a day and age where that was very, very tedious, a very difficult, very dangerous. And she was part of a church reform. She started something unique, for her time at least, men and women living in a shared monastery. Hmm. Anyhow, hope uh, you didn't get bored through this whole um, uh, thing about St. Bridget. Uh, uh, I thought that was, for me, that was very enlightening. Um, and uh, today, uh, I mean, right now, <laughs> we're gonna uh, we're gonna move on to the Star Wars portion and the gaming portion of this uh, 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 stream. So let's start my um, live screen. Start up the Sith Lords Two, uh, Knights of the Old Republic Two Sith Lords. And for those of you who didn't watch yesterday. Uh, we're aboard the Evan Hawk. Uh, I have a new crew member who I didn't want to be there. They didn't want to be there, but uh, we found each other. Uh, we were here. And, um, and I have to sort of get to know everyone. So this first part will be about me exploring the ship. I guess this is where everyone sleeps. To the left here, we have some part of the ship that's being reconstructed, and my friend Beodor. Well, let's get to know him a little bit. An old veteran of the Mandalorian Wars. General means something. And I was, apparently, was his general. Uh, I was just wondering what you've been doing since the war. Ended. I moved around for a couple of years, working as a starship mechanic got me from place to place. I wasn't ready to settle down after the war. Why did you move around so long? I kept moving, I didn't have to think about what happened. You know what I mean? Only too well. I'm sure you do. I decided I'd do something <laughs> instructive. I'm I wanted sure you to make do. up with the things I'd done in the war. I wanted to design planetary shields, but there weren't many systems with the credits to spare. There was more that needed to be rebuilt than protected. I found out that Telos was going to be the flagship project for the Republic. Then it sounded like something good. I saw Tilos before the Sith raided. He deserved a better fate. Zerka ruined everything. I thought I could force Zerka out on my own, but I guess I can't fix everything myself. What a what an anger in his voice. That's I mean, this is some decent voice acting, right? Uh, I, even though he's obviously is very monotonous, and he, but he puts. I think it's good. I think taking it might be a little out of your league. <laughs> it's good to have you around again. Let's do that. It's good to be working with you again, General. Something else I can help you. Oh my gosh. What do you pick up that remote? That old thing? I built him when I was a kid. It's been following me around for years now, despite what I've done to try and chase it mm. off. Hey, just kidding. I'm happy to have you around. That's gotta be annoying, can't be okay with it. He helps me out with repairs. I outfitted him with a cutting laser and some other tools for delicate modifications. Mm. He's also good for singeing the pants of annoying techs. Mm. Yeah, I understand. I've been thinking about doing some other work on it, but I barely have time. Too busy fixing up the ship. Something else I've had some odd camera work there. 
Do I have over lightsaber parts only? I'm gonna see what you have. No, you're still missing any meta matrix and lens. Right. Something else. Let's get those. What are you doing? Just working on the ship. I'm not sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space. No <laughs> crap. That's my ship again. It's not even space worthy. All right. So, uh, I talked with him. I didn't get any influence, so that's a bit of a bummer. Let's talk to him again. Sometimes uh, uh, they have, uh, you have to have conversation A before B before C, and um, you have some general conversation. Uh, and one of the things I noticed when playing Coder 1, the predecessor of this game, is that I didn't talk to the guys enough to, pro uh, to um, progress their storylines. I didn't want to talk about the war, but... There you know, so this is conversation B. Um, what is it? Why did you decide to fight? Now Lawrence had to be stopped. That's my central thing. The Jedi served no one with inaction. It was a mistake. I should have respected... I was eager to join the great battle. So one, the Mandalorians had to be stopped. I felt the same way. I remembered when word of the that is the thing, my thing, and I'm sticking with it. My people had colonies across the outer rim. Many of them were among the first systems to fall. I don't know. As good a reason for as any for joining. I did not join because I wanted to protect, though. I hated them. I wanted to destroy them. To give them the mercy mm. they gave the people they conquered. I remember the thrill I felt. And that is understandable, them. right? Victories were rare, but we celebrated every Mandalorian's death. If you see so much hate and destruction wreaked upon people, uh, ravaged, I don't know how, how we just say that, wrought upon people so much injustice and killing, you want to stop that. Yes, I felt it too. The rush of life is when the Lawrence were cut down. I detached myself from the friends, stayed with them personally, until I trained with strong emotions. All right, let's go with one. I couldn't do that. It was almost as though the battle took control of me, drove me forward. It's always on my mind now. That loss of control blinded me. It turned me into a weapon. I, I noticed his... Uh, to get that off my chest. Was there something you wanted me for? Didn't get any influence with him. I'm almost... Just, uh... Just indulge me for a second. I do want to try and get the most out of this. General? Um, I don't think I'm wrong. Uh, I, I won't. I All I didn't want to talk. Why? I, my All right, so now, do you want to revenge? Revenge, and to crush the Mandalorians. To send them, I did not. I All right, so do you know the feeling? Yes, I feel it too. It's always on my, I, was it? That okay? Yeah. 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 Is it? I, something. All right. Ah, darn it. So that didn't yield, up, yield anything either. Yes, General? Alright, so, anywho, that really didn't matter, so sorry about that, I just wanted to see if, if, if I could get any um, influence with him. And here we got my favorite little droid, and my central thesis is, be nice to the droids, except if they're HK protocol droids trying to kill you. Do you know where that came from? Oh, he knows. I got enough influence. This is why you need influence. So you get these extra storylines. You were trying to rebuild him. Why? Oh, my. To protect me, but that's an assassin droid. A deranged assassin droid. I'd rather have your help, and that's it. Maybe it's happy I praised him. Yes, I understand. You're not a combat monster. I know a droid's behavior depends on his master. Can't. Any ideas how? To... 
All right, all right. Where did you get it from? Any idea how it's part? So we don't know. <laughs> Any ideas how it, the parts get? He doesn't apparently. I had to ask. Do you know where I can find the parts? Check with droid merchants across the galaxy. Then I have other questions for you. Do you know where the uh, okay how's the Ebonhawk? Good job. Glad to hear it. T3, I really appreciate your help. He's probably really easy to butter up. What about the astrogation system? Ooh, enough influence. You locked it. Why did you do that? Protect with the Republic for already in trouble. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, what did I forget? An old friend. Why was there. Why was where this friend had gone so dangerous? How did the Ebonhawk come back from there if it was so dangerous? T3, you have been with us since Terrace. <gasps> Bastila. Without you, we would never have escaped that place. And for that, I thank you. I'm leaving this message inside you because I have seen glimpses of the future. And the bond that he and I share does not allow him to hide everything from me. More of his memories have returned, and they trouble him. He has remembered something. Something on the edge of the galaxy. And he believes that he must go there to end it. I am afraid for him. Afraid that he is he, not. Is she talking about me? I need you to be the beacon, T3. If he is lost out there, on the edge of the galaxy, if he finds whatever terrible thing he has seen, then he may not survive. Maybe she is. Maybe I know Bastila. I need you to she knows me. Republic. Find help. If you cannot find me, then seek out other Jedi. The Republic can't lose him, even if he believes he is protecting me. Of yours. So I don't know her. Maybe she's talking about Revan. I don't know. Why you were concealing that from me? Who was the person? Another missing friend? What happened to your old friend? Because he couldn't take any of them, even the woman in the hologram. That must have been Revan then, right? Uh, any left you? I'm sorry, T3. Man, I'm getting creds with this little droid but you did help you found us t3 if we can stop the sith then there is hope after all you were able us to gather us and together we can crush the sith all right let's go with one um that message just tell me where the Aben hawk came from but why don't you have that information so this help so this help you came in search of you came in search of me but why me i was powerless defenseless you needed someone strong enough to fight the danger i was coming someone who knew war and battle and could make hard choices that had to be made wow you need the last of the jedi to hear the last of me no let's go with one i'm on a t3 I'm on a D3. I will do what I can to stop this threat. It's like talking to a child. When this journey is done, you will pay for what you've done and all you put me through. Okay, let's go with one. Man, I'm getting creds here. Uh, never mind. I'll be going now. Okay. Deleted by who? Oh, that's interesting. By whom? By who? You deleted it, why? There's something wrong here. There must have been a reason for that. You deleted it if you don't know why. I see. Don't be sorry, maybe you had a good reason or we were trying to protect someone. Mm -hmm. oh, I bet we'll find that out. We'll find that out. Okay. So a lot of light side points, influence gain, probably more than once. This is really useful. Now let's butter him up one more time, see if the storyline continues. Repair. Oh, I'm really good at repair. That's the one thing I can do. Uh, I'll try and make this quick. 
Well done with the response package. Give it a spin. Ah, good. Good plus one dexterity. Well, I need to concentrate, you know, which means shutting out the rest of the ship. Ooh, that'll be nice for him. Alright, well, we'll upgrade him again another time. We have 500 XP. Well, maybe one more time. I think my uh, skills are good enough. Maybe some advanced maintenance is in order. Woo! Let's not waste any time then. Oh, jeez! <laughs> Look, if you don't subscribe, you're gonna blow out your vocabulary. No, okay. We'll try again later. For now, I wanna train my skills a little more. Okay, so that was a mistake. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, he didn't. Uh, you know, uh, dock me any influence. So that's good. Uh, handmaiden. Handmaiden, handmaiden, handmaiden. What am I going to do with you? All right, let's talk to her. Snuck oh, on board my ship against my wishes. Is there something you need? You could have asked. Are you all right? Yes, your features, your stance. There was a calm about you that I did not notice. She is completely years. enamored with, with the Jedi and with me, I think. There is an energy about you, a lightness in your movements. Or seems to be. It is something I have seen in only the most disciplined and revered of the Ichani Weapon Masters. Yet it comes to you with ease. I feel so better. I feel more in touch with my surroundings and others. It shows in your features. It is beautiful to see. Oh my. You may ask. Uh, did Atris ever mention She me? said you betrayed the Jedi by going to war when it was forbidden to you. You turned on your masters, your teachings, and yourself. Okay. I think we already uh, went through the whole discussion here. That is not all she says. She says you know nothing of loyalty to any cause except your own animal instincts. Oh yeah, we animal instincts. I know I had this talk yesterday. Atris says that you felt. All right, forget. I had some other yeah. questions. Um, I wanted to ask you about Atris. I do not wish to speak of her to you. Ooh. Her actions are her own. And Okay, so at least yes. I didn't get any uh, uh, influence dock because I just randomly clicked an option. I wasn't sure what that was about. I am training so that if danger should strike, my body and my reflexes will be prepared. That, and I have forgotten how long hyperspace travel can be. If I do not have something to focus my attention on, I fear my sanity will erode as well. Ooh. She could always play Pazak with Atten. What do you mean, Pazak? What, again? <laughs> No, I do not trust him. With cards? That too. That too. <laughs> Look, I don't think anyone here trusts each other. It's going to be a short journey if everyone's watching each other for betrayal. That is untrue. You and the Iridonian trust each other. Or at least the Iridonian trusts you. We heard much of the Iridonian when we served Atris. Atris believed that the Iridonian held the knowledge to restoring Telos. Who, Beodur? Yes. His skill with machines is something beyond which most can aspire to. His shield technology surpasses the designs of even the most skilled of Ichani power architects. Right. I do not realize if you know what it means to have such a one respect and follow you. The Iridonian allied himself with no one on allied. the entire world of Telos. Yet he will follow you at the risk of his life. His stance, in many ways, mirrors yours. Where he walks, he carries a world upon his shoulders. And like you, I do not know if he has ever faced it. Ooh. I want to talk about it. I don't want you to ask about him either. It's not your concern. You'd never understand. Hidden away in your academy, listen to some shut up who never fought in the wars. Maybe you'd like to explain why Atreus is size. Okay, maybe three. I see. Forgive my words. They were poorly chosen. Don't apologize. It was a long time ago. It's difficult to describe to someone who wasn't there. The Mandalorian Wars were like that for many. Many returned, who could not tell of their experiences in a way that could bring meaning to them. Okay, so no yes. loss or gain of influence, darn it. What are you doing? I'm training. That, and I had forgotten it. Okay. Right, other yeah. questions? Let's see. 
Why do you look different than your sisters? I honor the face of my mother. We already uh, did that. This had that discussion. It's sad that it comes back, so I have to go. Why are you called the handmaid? We attend Atris. It is the duty of all of us, from How? the first of my sisters to me, the last of the handmaidens. You're the last of them? I am the last of the handmaidens. This is correct. I train so that one day that will no longer be true. Your skill is impressive, as is your devotion to your training. Let's that do that. That is not entirely correct. There are times <laughs> I am. Distracted. Well, aren't we all, huh? Perhaps once having known the ways of the Jedi, you may understand what occupies my thoughts. What do you mean? There is much knowledge on Telos, and only one of the Jedi remain. There is so much about their ways of battle, their forms, their stances, that may be lost forever if the last of the Jedi is taken from the galaxy. Battle is not the truth of the Jedi teachings. I believe it's the farthest thing from it. Hmm. That's not going to ring a bell with her, I don't think. Combat is not the Jedi way, and it's not my way. Is this what occupies your thoughts? To lose uh, those combat would be tragic indeed. Let's do that. She is obviously a combatant. She's a fighter. When the methods to inflict violence on others are limited, it weakens us all. Okay, let's go with four. I know your meaning, but I have not been clear on mine. Ooh. Stance, form, discipline are a means of expression See? and communication. They speak one's heart and one's devotion to their cause. They consider slaughter a means of expression. I agree. It shows how far you're willing to go for your goals. Devotion, I prefer obedience. <laughs> Right. It was to the Jedi traitor Malak. It was to the Jedi traitor Revan. When Terrus was destroyed, Ooh. it showed Malak's heart through its execution and intent. It was brutal, without finesse, but showed his commitment to defeat the Jedi. Yet with Revan, there was the same commitment, but it was a subtle thing, like weaving threads in a tapestry or strokes upon a canvas. He spoke through battle and tactics in a way one could never do in words. He showed his heart at Malakor dun, dun, dun. and finally, at the end of the Jedi Civil War. I believe he was speaking to Malak in that final battle, though few knew it. Revan turned on Malak once a friend and killed him. Malak was slain, and it was all... So Revan is the, 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 the big master, Malak was his student, Malak sort of defeated Revan, Revan turned to the Jedi, uh, lost his memory, to, uh, was picked up by the Jedi, I should say, raised as a, re-educated as a dread Jedi, and took down Malak again. So for those of you who don't know the story of Coder 1, really impressive. Uh, the Force drove, and a really classic Star Wars story, and a really big plot twist, because um, you're Revan in the end. The Force drove Revan to do what was... Uh, what needed to be done and that is all what do you think Revan was saying I would not ascribe too much poetry to their hate and okay but let's go with five through battle Revan was meeting betrayal with betrayal and showing Malak the pain he had inflicted on his master what stronger display than death for conveying one's sense of huh. being betrayed by one's own student huh. Revan's anger must have been great indeed I would have wished <laughs> to have been there for that oh my <laughs> And seen the truth. <laughs> Not just kill it. Yeah, he didn't kill. I, I, I didn't kill him. I exchanged words and communicated my feelings about the betrayal you'd inflicted upon me. All right. Um. You may ask. Do you have a Before name? Before entering Atris's service, yes, I carry the name, mm. as all the children of Iachani do. What was it? It is not important. My title and rank is of consequence, not my name. I take value in Atris's service, not in myself. You should take value in yourself as well. Let's educate we her a little bit. We all have value in our oaths to others and the promises we make. Oh my. When we make that pledge, we are pledging ourselves to something greater. When importance is placed on the self, then by such acts, the galaxy is unmade. I do not know. That is a question you must ask yourself. Hmm. I'm letting you stay <laughs> right now. <laughs> Keep your opinions to yourself. I have some other questions. You may ask. 
I would like to to return to the academy. What are you doing? Do you have a name? Man. Yes. All right. So so far, we've gotten to know a few of them. Ah, there's our friend Kreia. She always turns around quite rapidly. One, two. Bam. How many more do we intend to gather to us? This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. Is it? Perhaps you are wrong. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. What do you think they obey me? Because I am not blind, that is why. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the huh. change when they speak to others. Why are you angry? How do you know that? Does the fact they obey me upset you? Why are you angry? I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am yeah, manipulator. You're a manipulator. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? They echo you, either fighting or surrendering to their feelings, their loyalty, mm. their duty. Your mere presence serves as an example to them of something to uphold or something to fight against. Watch them carefully, see their patterns, and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. And what about you? Do you have a point? Well, Good, and then act upon it. It is a powerful tool to motivate others. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. Ouch. I keep hoping to gain influence with folks, but I can't. But, I, you know, this is light enough for me, so... <laughs> yes. With At this point in the game, I want you to teach me about the force. Very well. What is it that drives you? The bond we share. I want to build a lightsaber. Can you teach me? I wish to know more about force forms. Very well. Of which did you wish instruction? Uh, the one that allows me to focus the force. It allows you to recover your strength with the force more quickly, and it lends strength. It has no other drawbacks. Such a form is a gift. Preferred mm. in the Jedi consulars and effective in combat That's exactly what I am. and only through the Force. Ask. Kriya, what are you? Are you a Jedi or a Sith? What's wrong with your eyes? You don't seem to like the handmaid and why. Let's. This is a lot of stuff, and all of this is really good. Let's go from the top. There are countless reasons, and I have neither the time nor the patience oh, to Oh, my God. Don't be so impatient. She offered to help us. We could drop her uh, on the next planet. Perhaps we should stop, stop talking about her. Simply eliminate her. <laughs> oh, my God. She's offered to help us. So show her the same respect I show you. <sighs> Let's go with three. No, she may have her uses. I will abide her presence, and so should mm. you. Okay. Well, why do you say that? Because Atris is a threat. And as much as she would try to use us against you, so may we use her servants against her. Smart. Do not see every enemy as an enemy. See them instead as an ally, whether mm. they realize it or not. As the she's using everyone, including me, bond. for her own scheme, I do not see the handmaiden as an enemy. I will keep that agreed. We need every tool we can get. Good. That is the most to be done until events unfold, as I'm sure they will in... Influence game. Bam. Got it. I did get some uh, dark side points, yes. which is fine. I can deal with that. Uh, okay. Yes, and I need some and answers. Ask, and I will do my best yeah. to Yeah, without ask. any sass, please. What's wrong with your eyes? There is nothing wrong with my sight, if that is your question. I see all that I need, 
Though the seeing of things flesh and blood has failed me some time ago, they were distractions. Oh, my. There is nothing wrong with my eyes. They simply have atrophied from Ooh, use. Atrophy from they use. are adequate to distinguish shapes, silhouettes. If need be, I could heal them, restore my sight. But sight can prove a distraction. And I can regrow my hand. Sight to perceive the world. But that would like be an inconvenience. Stare at the galaxy through a crack in the door. But that is a lesson for another time. I mean, so I so much time, so much space is saved by not having this hand. Yada yeah, my gosh. Okay, that is yes. Um Us. Uh Kreia, what are you? And she'll say there's no such need for categories. Does it matter? Of course it does. Such titles allow you to break the galaxy. And into I will not be categorized. Oh she is definitely Perhaps a Sith. I am neither. And I hold both as what they are, pieces of a whole. That's why she always remains great. No matter what I do, she always remains great. No matter how much influence I have, how much charisma I have, she'll remain great. To ally myself with someone without knowing their allegiance is unwise. Let's see what, what she says. What did you wish to hear? That I once believed in the code of the Jedi? That I felt the call of the Sith? That perhaps once I held the galaxy by yes, its throat? Yes, that's what I want to hear. That for every good work that I did, I brought equal harm upon the galaxy? That perhaps what the greatest of the Sith Lords knew of evil they learned from me. Ooh. What would it matter now? There is only so much comfort in knowing such things, and it is not who I am now. Well, I still wish to hear this story. Oh no, what happened? Oh! Oh! Oh, we're gonna get an actual cutscene? Cool! Oh, wow. Cool. There are dark places in the Darth galaxy Greer. where few tread, ancient centers of learning, of knowledge, but I did not walk alone. To be united by hatred is a fragile alliance at best. Oh my. That is her student then, the sleep with viral blade, sleeps with viral blade uh, dude that attacked me. And is that, is that Darth Nihilus? My will not law. There were disagreements. Oh my. Ambition. The Council of the Sith Lords. And hunger for power. There are techniques within the Force against which there is no difference. Okay, that... Uh, okay. I was cast down, stripped of my power, exiled. Oh, wow. I suffered indignities and fell into darkness. Cool. I got that because I have a high enough wisdom Learn score. Learn my mistakes and use that knowledge to become greater than I. That is all I ask of you, and that is all I desire. Oh, I... In you, all my hopes rest for the future, for the Force. Oh, my. That's not sufficient, Kriya. I need more than that, Kriya. If it means so much to you, then thus I swear to you upon my life, upon our lives, that when your training is complete, I will answer everything. Cool. There shall be no more shadows between us, Ooh. only truth that exists between master <laughs> and apprentice. Oh, I got 1,000 XP for this. Yes. Not bad, guys. All right. Um, let's uh, quick save here. Yes. Uh, uh, did you know Atris at all? I, know her as much as I don't have enough Jedi. influence yet. If you have other questions, you... All right. Darn it. Ask. I had questions about how Revan amassed such a huge force against the Republic. Yeah. A discussion. Ask. Do you know anything about? Do you, did you know Revan? I miss. Wow. Ask. I don't have enough influence with her, even though she told me that amazing story. 
She was like one of the big three Sith Lords. Do you know anything about the Sith who pursue us? I see more than we already know. There is danger. What? All right, so I can gain a lot more influence with her, folks. Ah, oh, man. There's T3. All right, so let's see if there's anyone here. No, no one in this med bay. I do have one more part of the HK unit. Uh, the control cluster still hasn't done anything I think you just need all four of these items I put in two and now we're moving to Atten Atten I think that's the last one security system let's look at um, the cargo hold no she's not training anything that's nice but cockpit nothing we can't see if we walk around so oh, interesting okay so hello Atten let's uh something up I have some questions right. for you what did you want to Care to explain where you got your Achani training? Now we're gonna get somewhere. Huh? What are you talking about? When you entered Tila's Academy, you dropped into an Achani combat stance. Oh, that. I mean, oh, it doesn't compare to wearing a lightsaber, up. but then again, that doesn't seem to help you much. First of all, you don't change the subject. Yeah, so what? I don't ask any dumb questions about your past, despite the fact that it keeps throwing us into life-threatening situations. Wanna know why? I figure if you ever want to tell me something, you will. So give me the same respect, all right? No, I... I'm not accused. I just want to know if you've got any other useful skills. You could be a real asset with combat training. Well, hey, thanks. But you've got the wrong guy. I'm good at shooting people, cracking wise, and pretending to know how to fight with my hands. Yeah, there's gained influence lost, so that's not really helping me. Something up. Uh, Let's see if we can exploit this. Huh? Oh, I mean. Uh. Don't change the subject. Well, hey, thanks. But you've got the wrong guy. I'm good at shooting. Okay. Better. All right, so I got at least got some influence with him. And maybe he'll Something tell me up. in his own time. All right, uh, good. Uh, there's nothing. Okay, so at least I got a little influence out of him. And now, my friends, thank you. This might not be the most exciting thing, but all these guys' stories are amazing and as you can see with Kreia I got this amazing little cutscene and even though I got the cutscene based on my wisdom score uh, I don't have enough influence to take any more information out of her story but it's exactly that which makes this game amazing and look at the design of this even though it is super outdated obviously that gray almost colorless design with the blue and yellow. Isn't that beautiful? Even he, has, there's no saturation in our clothing. Uh, but there is a lot of saturation here in this blue and yellow. That is, and this droid is great. It is really well done. Uh, she is white. Is she white? No, she's gray. Uh, but you know she is wearing white, white clothing when you see the cutscenes of her. And they really muted those colors on board the Ebon Hawk. Um, it looks very nice for a game this old. Uh, this a lot of thought ha has gone into that. Just noticing that as your little communication expert, dude, which I also am. Uh, this is the mining station. Doesn't do anything. Telos little station. Don't want to go there. Andron, 
There's a war there. Narshida. Dantooine. And Korriban, the Sith planet. Now, all these planets have one Jedi Master on them that I have to track down. And I am going to go to Narshida first. It has been generally uh, uh, alleged that Narshida is the best planet to start on. Um, how do I know this? I remember playing this game and looking that up because I didn't want to uh, muck it up. Um, uh, I am going to look here though for a second. Um, best, best, uh, companions, Nar Shada. Best companions to bring to certain planets. The thing is, you don't want to miss any possible influence. Like you, you noticed I saved and sometimes even reloaded the game. Because if you don't get the influence, the story's full stuck, and the game gets so much ma really amazing. I'd like to try and get all all the stories while playing this game. All right, I got a Reddit thread on this. Let's see if we can open it. Get the app. I already have the app. Open. Man. Let me check on my PC really quick. I'll uh, jump out and I think you might be able to see my screen. Uh, uh, and uh, best companions. Not Shada. There's the Reddit thread. I'm playing through Coder 2 again for the first time. Okay. Ah, it's different to say on as most of the characters all have something interesting to say on each planet. Um, this seems like miss Mr. Fire and Forget. It'd be a crime not to take Atten. Mix with Beodor for the slavers, a handmaid for the guy who wants your ship. Go try getting your companions to strip too. Freya, sarcasm and lethal. Handmaiden is adorable. Mira hates your guts. And Visus has stoic refusal. Also, HK can help out. So there's a lot of these guys that I, I don't have Mira, I don't have Visus, and I don't have HK yet. Uh, so basically, Atten and Beodur and or Handmaiden. I'm gonna write this down because I'm gonna forget. Uh, so Narshida, Atten, Beodur for the slavers, and Handmaiden for uh, the guy who wants your ship. All right, and Kreia for. Stripping. Handmaiden is adorable. All right. Like you plan on circumventing. I don't really think there's a big narrative advantage. Let's see if we can. Just so I don't uh, miss out on I tend to leave Atten out initially because I level same on him and without leveling he's a bit, yeah, that's useful. Okay. This is all really fragmented. That doesn't really give me much. IGN might have something really good. <laughs> A consolar. Consolar. Oh, this will give me... Actually, I should really read this. So... Okay. 
that's probably useful. Best character to have in party. There's no specific thing we need to get him. You can go to no shit. It doesn't look like I got such a great. Um... All right, so let's go with what we know now, and I'll have to get more into this in my own time. Uh, time. Okay, so I have to go to the dentist in about an hour. That's really gonna suck because uh, I'm gonna get a root canal. I already got. I already got the first step. I'm not sure if the second is going to be more uh, difficult than the first or more painful. I can hardly imagine. And not that it was that painful. It was annoying. I couldn't bite down on it for a while. It lasts for a good a week. Other than that, and it felt a little... The day it was done, it didn't feel really great, but it wasn't bad. So I'm not too worried, but uh, yeah. All right, so Narshida, let's travel. Now let's at least see some action. If you guys have been stuck with me, if you're watching this uh, during all these uh, conversations, well, now it's time to pay are. out. The smuggler's Woo! load. It's the gaping maw of Nal Hutta, swallowing all the cargo and spaceport thugs the galaxy has to offer. Mm. Mandalorians, mercenaries, war veterans, mm. and pilots from the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War ended up on Nar Shaddaa cool. from all sides of the conflict. When the last war ended, there was no place left for them to go. Nar Shaddaa's a rough place and easy to get lost in. Or for someone to get lost. He knows a lot, hey? keep out of sight from the Sith for a while, you couldn't pick a better spot. All right, what's Nal Hutta? It means glorious jewel in Hattis, but don't it's let that the fool control you. Of the huts. It's the central breeding grounds of the huts. Nar Shaddaa orbits it. Nal Hutta's as slimy as the huts. Lots of swamp and bloated gas. Cool. It's where those slugs reach out and grab chunks of the galaxy. Trust me, we're not going to go anywhere near the place unless we want to be washing the stink out of our clothes for the next few cool. years. Cool. That bad? I didn't think anything could compel you to bathe. Oh! You all day that joke? That's some if sass. Maybe Odo should start a circus. I fail to understand the reference, though I doubt your explanation will prove worthwhile. Oh, man! Holy crap! <laughs> oh, she's... So, conclusion to all this banter. So, there's a lot of ex-soldiers on Nar Shaddaa. How hard would it be find to find a Jedi there? Probably pretty hard. How hard will it be to hide? Probably not. These are all open-door questions. Then, let's take the Evan Hawk for a land. Okay. Yeah. Some came looking for work running freight and cargo. Still, there's only so many ships to go around and so many workers. So, others lend their weapons to the huts in the exchange. It's become a prime base for raider recruitment across the galaxy. Yeah. How hard would it be to find a Jedi there? It won't be easy. There's so much traffic on Nar Shaddaa. Finding anyone on the moon's surface is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. We're going to touch down in the refugee sector. It's so cute. This game is so tiny because uh, it's so old, you know. Uh, now you have these big open worlds. Here it's just have a few alleys. And they say, apparently this is like the huge, a huge cesspool of a planet. Ooh, awareness. Sounds like you've been here before. Let's do that. So this question, even though an open door is actually was actually worthwhile, we're gonna get a little story. Anyone flying the Star Alliance is docked on Nar Shaddaa at least Very once. noncommittal I wouldn't want to live there, and I doubt anyone does by choice. What is the refugee sector? Not everyone who came to Nar Shaddaa were soldiers. A lot of worlds were destroyed by the Mandalorians and the Jedi. Left a lot of people wandering the galaxy. All right. Shouldn't be too hard. There's so much traffic on Nar Shaddaa, finding anyone on the moon's surface is going to be hard. We're going to touch down in the refugee sector. There's a lot more traffic there, and it's harder for people to spot you coming in or find you once you arrive. Cool. All right. I've plotted a course for the refugee sector, and we should touch down within the hour. Once we're down, we should finally be able to breathe easy. There's no way anyone's going to find <laughs> us here. <laughs> cool. Cool, look at that. I always like that. It filled me. It's kind of what I associate uh, with Coruscant, although Coruscant is a lot more um, bright, vibrant color, I think, in my mind. And you got the Jedi ca uh, Council Temple and stuff. The Jedi Temple. Ah, oh, beautiful. Alright, so, we got a nice little landing pad somewhere in the refugee sector. 
Oh no. That's one funky ass ship. Is that Karst? Onassi ship? Is that a Sith Lord ship? What? Oh, that is Goto the Crime Lord. Oh my, some Twi'lek sisters, a lot of droids, and a Wookiee. There we go, that's Goto. Perhaps you have heard that the Jedi comes to Nar Shaddaa. <laughs> when he walks upon the smuggler's moon, he is not to be harmed. You may watch him, observe cool. his movements, but nothing more. Wow. You tell him, angry Wookiee. <laughs> you carry to work from it. Oh. 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 Okay. So he has got a life debt and someone he doesn't want to pay the life debt to, but he's bound to it. Request if Goto's vessel is no longer neutral ground, inform us so that we might initiate assassination <laughs> Facilitate communication. And terminate hostilities. Oh my. Oh my. I got two, two legs on my case. Oh my. <laughs> Self destructive path of pacifism. Well. I'm a nice Jedi, aren't I? I'm a nice Jedi. Oh no! What? They're going after my companions now? Ah, the beautiful stench and decay of desert <laughs> living. It's been moved. It's been changed life. It is difficult to center oneself. My, Welcome that's a nice little gang, isn't it? Towering buildings kilometers high and miles deep. With canyons so wide, you could have a dogfight in them. Yeah. Word of warning, watch where you step, or you'll fall for hours. Oh, God, that is just my worst nightmare. Like, I wouldn't say I have, like, a crippling fear of heights, but I get queasy sometimes. <laughs> All right. Uh, are we going to be okay on this landing pad? That's a fair question. Sure. Most of the landing pads around here are unclaimed. Or should be. Ah, right. They're pretty badly maintained, so they're not safe to land on. Well, I mean, not this one. But they all have the reputation, so we should be all right. Uh -huh. I think. Uh huh. The Evan Hawk looks a little exposed. Maybe a little, but landing here means we didn't have to transmit our ID signature. You know what trouble that always brings. Uh -huh. In fact, while we're here, we should get those signatures changed. Wouldn't make us such a target when we enter a new system. Cool. Are we going to be okay on this? So that's one thing we need to do. Sure. Most of. Oh wait. Uh, any problems with the doctor? No, but I forgot to tell them we were landing. The refugee sector's a dead zone. No one cares too much who flies in and out of here as long as they're not carrying cargo that the exchange or the huts might want mm. a piece of. Is this the refugee yeah. sector? In yeah. all okay. its glory. Cool. Don't get your hopes up from what you see here, though. As soon as we hit the main sector, that's when the smell and the mobs can get pretty bad. All right, then, let's move out. Uh, where are we headed exactly? It does not matter where we go. If what we seek is here, we shall come upon it in due time. Uh, yeah, if you want to stay on the ship and meditate some more, don't let us stop you. <laughs> I'm just looking for a place to lay low. No, I wouldn't mind getting some new equipment. Ah, that, I guess that's true, but I'm, I'm cool for now. I want to find more about this bounty on Jedi. If Seskai L is here, I want to find him. That's it. Finding a Jedi 
or anyone else touched by the force here will be difficult. You just said the mass of people that they'll come to emotions. me if if they are here. It makes detection difficult. But this moon does not get any smaller while we wait. Yeah. This sector is as good as any place to begin our search, so let us begin. Fair point. Well, if we're going to search a moon of a few billion inhabitants for one Jedi that even our own can't sense, might as well start as soon as possible. All right. Let's see where our path All takes right. us. If you have any questions, just ask. We should be able to leave the ship here as long as we want. No one supervises these landing I have anymore. a feeling this you, is going to go awry. Uh-oh. What's with you? Let that piece of junk sink its thrust into my landing pad. I think it's fine where it is. Uh, the exchange to the huts or the exchange? Landing pad. Ships land on it. Is there a kind of problem? I don't have time for this. Let's try uh see if my persuade is up to speed. Yeah. Well, it's the first I've heard of it. Tell you what, huh. let me check it out. If you're clear, then you're clear. No trouble. The exchange also told me if you gave me any trouble, I could kill you. Check it out. I'll be sure to let the exchange know you delayed me from making my drop. Hmm. Ah, never mind. It's not quite the trouble. Cool. I gotta tell you, though, I got another one of your ships docking here within an hour. I'm not sure what to tell them. Um. Let's separate them. All right. Cool. So, uh, he said, I'm going to take Handmaiden now and at... Hmm? Seems like a fun combination. And Builder, if they're slavers, we'll talk to... We'll get Builder. And if we're gonna stripping, apparently Kreia is really fun to have along. So I got some dark side points. Honestly, uh, I'm so far up the light side now and it doesn't really matter that much. And there's gonna be plenty of space yes. to improve. So let's level up Handmaiden. Let's look at her skills. She's good at awareness. Let's raise that just a tad more. Feet, so she can wear Heavy armor, which let's go back. Dexterity is the highest she has, so why why outfit her with heavy armor that limits movement? Conditioning is pretty good. It gives you bonus to saving throws, and she has the power attack raised. She is good at she's got some toughness, and she's an unarmed fighting specialist. And she is dual handed. Dual weapon specialist. Uh, less melee weapons. Let's, um, I'm good with that. Add, add that as a feat. And upgrade her a little more. Mm. Let's invest in her dexterity just a tad more for the heck of it. Skills, awareness, please let me have a feed. Yeah, good. Uh, the dual weapon thing, let's make her a... Uh, skills, awareness. Oh, this is awesome, those feats are so good. Let's upgrade that to the max. Gives me a negative three penalty to hit, but if it does hit, the damage is substantial. I can upgrade even more. Man, this is a an iron specialist. Well, she is gonna get weapons from me. Uh, I'm gonna upgrade her to max in a melee plus two a bonus to hit, I suppose. And this just goes on and on. Ichan, oh, Ichan, what is this? Ichani Stripe? When using unarmed attacks, I didn't want that. All right, so this gives her the max number of vitality points. It's like opening Christmas presents. All right, so clothing, uh, powered battle armor, which has a dexterity bonus of one, dexterity bonus of three. Let's see where she's at right now. She's at a dexterity bonus of three. 
And she's looking pretty cool in her new armor, not that stupid white stuff. So this is actually... This could actually be pretty good for her. Strength package always does well in melee. Rebreather mask. Okay. Will she look really dumb now? Think, thankfully, I don't think you'll notice. You see it. We have a nice little energy shield for you. Melee shield, fine. There's nothing here to give her. Nothing here, and she has this. Handmaiden Staff, 7 through 17, and plus 16 to hit. Let's look. focus on this here. 2 through 12, attack modifier, plus 2, defense bonus 1. This is a good thing. 2 through 12, 3 to 17, attack modifier 1, upgradable. This, the War Sword Sith War Sword, is even more impressive in my mind. Because this only has hit on a 20 this as well but it's higher yeah four spike maybe no okay my look at her decked out you changed the you changed a lot yep that's hemp maiden all right um i need to sort of brush my teeth and stuff and um also shave, I was always like to clean shave when I go to the dentist because he's looking at this part of my face quite intensely. Uh, am I a neurotic person that wants to overcomplete things? <laughs> All right, so there's nothing here that I can uh, 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 rob, <laughs> rob, loot. Um, give a proper use for the right cause. All right. Exchange thugs. Obviously, I am here at the heart of the exchange, and we're going to have to try and stop them, of course, because they're... Oh, my. Great legs, maybe. You not wander so no. far. Look, you can't keep us trapped in the refugee sector. We can't survive there. You've got us locked in. I'm looking at a dead goon. Is what I'm. A couple of cowards without the stomach for a real fight. Bunch of corpses. That's what I was thinking. But you don't leave a bunch of corpses. One human, not a amazing fight. More than one human, a little better. Spill more blood. You're obviously dumb, because we're like... Let's take down the front guy first. Terminate hostilities. Facilitate communication. Wow. <laughs> that was fast. Wow. I didn't... That was lightning fast. Cool. We're not bad. Let's talk to the dude. Thanks for your help. They would have crippled me for sure. Since then, violence and hurt you. Why were they hunting you? Well, they worked for the exchange. For a quarren named Ugh, Another quarren. He's looking to step up in the exchange. Yeah. The only language the exchange respects is money. Oh. So Viscus is trying to increase his profits by using the refugees here in Nar Shaddaa as a cheap labor force. What? But we're only good to him as slaves and merchandise. He wants to keep us in one place so he can control us. That's always been the way. Well, except lately. What do you mean? The exchange has been clamping down on the refugee sector hard, and I've no idea why. Mm. They started kidnapping people, hurting others, but there seems to be no reason to it. Why can't I try to help but head out of here? Whatever your reasons, thanks. All right. Prosperity credits, friend. Yeah. Much appreciated, friend. Life's hard in the refugee sector, and this should go a long way to helping. Uh, all right. I don't know much beyond the refugee sector here, but I can share what I know. 
I bet I shouldn't. I shouldn't go. Yeah, I like a bum is gonna know uh, Jedi Master Zeskiel. This sector is filled with refugees from the Jedi Civil War, and even as far back as the Mandalorian Wars. Refugees and war veterans both, and anyone else who was rendered homeless by the war. Hmm. The Jedi destroyed planets across the galaxy, and here's where the wreckage ended up. Okay. The Sith did. That's two names for one thing. It's it doesn't matter to the people, I guess. And the Sith were led by Jedi. In the end, it didn't make much difference. All right, fair enough. Well, we Look, now. one other thing. It's obvious you're new around here. True. I can tell it just by looking at you. Yeah. No Shadar can be a rough place and easy to get lost in. If you want, I can keep an ear out for you. Let you know if I hear anything. Oh, appreciate that. I'll do that then. I'll come seek you out if I hear anything. I think cool. I got my own little foreman. Fred's lost. Fred's invested, more like. Ready. All right. I saw what you did to those exchange folks, stranger. Can you spare a few credits, maybe help another refugee in need? That voice is already, of course, here to take five credits. Thank you, stranger. I won't forget your kindness. All right. Why did you do such a thing? Such kindness is oh, going to be as Parton said. Giving him what he has not earned is like pouring sand into his hands. Uh, nothing is said with the can't stand by and let them suffer. Nothing is said as long as there's hope, there's a chance for redemption every day. It may help him if nothing else but to survive. I should tell Kreia, like, yeah, I'm just investing him, using him as a tool. That would really turn her on. Um, is there a way to avoid losing influence with her? Not with these answers, I don't think. So that pretty much screwed me over. Gonna stand by, let others suffer when I can help them. Ugh. That, I mean, that's good, but uh, not for Kreia. Nothing is said as long as there's hope. Let, this is good, I think. This is the best of the worst option. And would that be a kindness? What if by surviving another day he brings a greater darkness upon another? True. What if he doesn't? The force binds all things. The slightest push, the smallest touch, sends echoes throughout life. Mm -hmm. Even an act of kindness may have more severe repercussions than we know or can see. By giving him something he has not earned, perhaps all you have helped him becomes a target. Five credits, go on, man. Seeing another elevated often brings the eyes of others who suffer. Oh, no. And perhaps in the end, all you have wrought is more pain. And that is my lesson to you. Be careful of charity and kindness, lest you do more harm with open hands than with a clenched fist. That lesson I will never learn. I shall never stop trying. I will consider what you said. There's wisdom when you say, Fred. Okay, this is the best thing. Good. Mind what I have said. Use your power, but in its proper place. Voila! Even even this has netted me light side points. That's probably for the credits given. And influence with Korea. I think that is a pretty good outcome. And there is a swoop garage. What's happening? Oh! What did he want? There's Mira. Just answers to some questions. Really? Interesting. Oh, I'm gonna be your informant. Yeah, you be my informant. Informing on someone else. On me. Bronzium light battle armor. Is this or is this not the right armor for her? This defense 10, max 6, 30, bonus 3. Nah. Wow, that selects heavy armor is actually really good. All right. Is it good for Atten then? Maybe. Because we got Atten's Rift Jacket. Defense bonus 4. Max Dexterity bonus 2. But I bet Atten has a high Dexterity. Dexterity 20. So that should be more than 2. So yeah, he will. we're going to have... Even though this looks really swanky. Nice. But let's... Uh, Give him his ripped jacket back. 
sap, but a plasteel cylinder. Air speeder navigation interface. I don't even know what that is. You must first your iPhone. Cool. TT32. The 32nd maintenance assistance model to employ by my master. 32nd model. That should. That just opens a whole can of. Pages 31 while employed by Master Ken have been explosive ends. <laughs> it's not Master Ken's fault. I'm proud to have lasted this long. Explosive ends. Oh my. Please ignore the carbon scoring on the walls. The accidents are already frequent and Master Ken is truly a craftsman. You said you were the 32nd version? Okay, I'm looking to buy some new equipment and fit full train must be cleared through Master Ken. Is there any other way? Okay, you can assist me by getting out of the way. Ah, well. So, apparently, while in the store, we can also help ourselves to getting stuck, apparently. An advanced med pack, med pack, med pack and a repair kit, which makes sense because injuries do happen on around the workplace i kind of want to see a sign this workplace has gone so many days without accidents all right and this must be master ken i forgot always forget what this race is called ken so it's someone in front of me Raise your chin 5 degrees and rotate your head 15 degrees. That's your age, what brings you here for the I can see you want something. Can you change the ship's ID transponder codes? Of course, why not? Let's let the blind guy do it. Could I? Will I? Not legal fight for my government? And people with both and stunners. I can pay you for your time. Smart of equipment, transponder cards are permanent ones written. I have none. I would need a new transponder card you wish to use, or a blank card and an ID signature. Alright. Uh, any parts or equipment I can buy? Ow! Uh, lightsaber crystal for a whopping 3k. Let's sell stuff first. Let's sell stuff we don't need first. First, the Darth Miles robes. I'm not gonna wear them. Let's go. Med pack. We are gonna use those. So many repair kits. Let's sell a whole bunch of those. Security tunnelers, I don't need. Because I got Atten. Yeah, take that, baby. Clothing can go. Darth Miles robes, yeah. Baron Doe novice robe can go. Yeah, handmaiden staff can go for 550. I wish it would say the price when you're looking at items to consider because the price says something about how useful it is. Like this four spike is actually pretty high. I really wonder. I really wonder if I'm gonna let Ant Maiden talk to this guy. Her sell items or shows. This is one thousand bucks, and this is sixteen fifty. So the weapon I chose. Attack modifier one, no attack modifier, but it gets stunned, which is why it is so good, probably. Ah, well, I'm, I'm happy with my choice, so maybe I'm making the wrong call here. Dump that, Beanux Blaster, which is pretty good. Let's sell that. 
So here's the grenades. I barely use sonic grenades. I barely use those plasmas were pretty strong. Iron grenade can go. The shields I can make use of. The stimulants. Now the mines. That actually will give me quite a lot of money. Broken items I can scrap for parts. And these are all upgrades. Let's keep those. Mark ones. Let's sell the Mark ones. And they're really cheap stuff. Like this. 27 credits. I'm not going to use that. Under 10. Let's do everything under one under 200 bucks let's sell everything under 200 dollars all right all right so this gives me 21,000 credits so that is actually pretty good of course now this whole thing is cluttered with my own junk but let's look at this damage plus three in my lightsaber so by that um wait gen Ruox, Crystal, Blaster Deflection, and Damage plus 2. Also worthwhile. That was only 1,000 crits, so let's remember that both that is a bit of an inferior crystal. Armor. Oh, let's have a little look. I think I need a lens and a focusing chamber. Let's see if this. This is an upgrade for a lightsaber. Wow, he's selling a lot of stuff, so let's buy that. Let's buy all the lightsaber stuff. Metal armor. Droid stuff. This is everything I sold. Let's look at his armors. And it's nothing. Okay. Alright, so I got two cr lightsaber crystals and maybe some sort of lightsaber battery. I might prevail upon you a favor. That's that's the C3PO I know. Look at my, my predecessor wasn't carelessly destroyed by Master Kin. What happened to him? After the last accident here in the garage, he was scrapped. He was then picked up by a junk dealer. A mechanical cannibal by the name of Coden. Filthy beast, large tusks, very unpleasant. What would you like me to do? Might I be able to get him back, not for sentimental reasons, but it has some plans with Master Kin. I like it. I'll be glad to help. Let me retrieve the droid from Coden. Plans, what plans? He's not at liberty to say. There's sensitive stuff. I could probably make some use out of leverage out of that with Master Kin. They aren't dangerous, are they? New prototype droid shield. Quite fascinating. Okay. Of course, it occurs to me I shouldn't have said that just now since I it was intended to be something of a secret. Okay. Sure, I can help you. Retrieve my previous memory core, then I would be most appreciative. Alright. Yada yada yada. This is great. Well, guys, this was Narshida, or at least the early start of my time on Narshida. We didn't do too much, sadly, but we are decked out we are ready to go and we did land and we got to know a lot of these characters more um tonight i'm gonna be at my uh father-in-law's 60th birthday if you will believe it i got a few things to in preparation to do in preparation so i save i just saved it right uh so i'm gonna have to let you guys go <laughs> so i can go <laughs> Um, let's have a look. Okay. Well, that was fun. I, I kind of like that. We really moved to, uh, to the first planet, ready uh, to find this master, ready to explore the uh, Nalhata's uh, uh, exchange-infested uh, scenes. Sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I'll go explore a little bit more tomorrow. Thank you.